What's going on, people? Steven here, and welcome to Dare to Capture. In this video, I'm going to tell you how you can take a good picture with any camera you want. It doesn't matter if you have a camera like this or like this. No matter what, you're going to be able to take a good picture after watching this video. It's important to remember that every camera has its limitations, but that doesn't mean that you can't get a great photo out of that camera. Smartphones nowadays are more than capable of taking a great photo, and just because you have a very expensive camera, that doesn't mean you're automatically gonna have a great photo. So I'm gonna tell you five tips on how you can almost guarantee that you have a great shot every single time you press that shutter button. First tip I'm gonna talk about is lighting. Lighting, no matter what picture you're taking, might be one of the most important aspects in any photo. If you think about it, good lighting is something that never really gets noticed, but bad lighting is something that gets noticed right away. You're never gonna look at a photo with good lighting and the first thing that pops in your head, oh man, the lighting is great. But if you see a photo with poor lighting, the first thing you're probably gonna think is, wow, I can't see anything, the lighting is terrible. And this is the reason why lighting is so important. Lighting is something that can actually make or break any photo that you're taking. You could have every other element in your photo set up perfectly, but if the lighting isn't good, you're not gonna get the best photo that you can out of everything that you have set up. A good photo is one where you can actually see exactly what's going on in the photo. If you're looking at a photo and you can't see anything because of the poor lighting, whether it's too dark or way too bright, then you're not gonna know what the photo is about. You're not gonna have any kind of story from the photo. You're just gonna know that it's either very overexposed or very underexposed. And when I say overexposed, I mean the picture is way too bright. And when I say underexposed, I mean the photo is way too dark. Now with lighting, you may think that you can save some of it through the editing process, which you can. If you have poor lighting, the editing process is only gonna be able to save you so much. And in the end, you're still gonna lose some details in the photo and it's still not gonna be nearly as good as it could be if you had good lighting when you originally took the photo. Now one good thing about lighting is that most of the time you can always manipulate it to help your photos no matter what. If you're outside, all you have to do is move to a spot that's more shaded or less light is getting to it. If you're inside, you can usually manipulate the light however you want to fit the type of photo that you need to get. One thing with artificial lights is that you can usually manipulate the colors, the temperature, how bright or dark it is. There's so many options that you can use with an artificial light that most of the time when you're using it, you don't have any excuse to have poor lighting. So no matter what camera you're using, you always wanna make sure that one of the first things you check is the lighting so that your camera can take the best photo possible. The second tip that's gonna allow you to take a good photo with any camera out there is composition. Now composition is how all the elements in the picture frame work together to form the image that you see. So for example, if you look behind me, all the elements that you see are planned, that they're placed there for a reason, and they work together to form the image that you see on your screen right now. When you're forming your composition before you take your photo, you need to make sure that the foreground, the subject, and the background all work together in a way that makes a pleasing image. You also need to understand that composition is only gonna be what your camera can see. So everything outside of the camera frame is gonna be something that you don't need to worry about. So if you look at this image right now and the composition of it, you literally don't know what's outside of that. But all you need to know is what the frame is showing you. Another thing when it comes to composition, everything you do with your composition needs to be done on purpose. It's gonna be something that is not easy to do because sometimes you feel like certain things work well together until you see the end product. So placing things in your composition on purpose is gonna take you a long way. If you're just throwing things randomly into your composition, then a lot of the time you're probably gonna get a composition that doesn't work well together, things stand out in an awkward way, and it's not gonna produce a good picture in the end. Now when it comes to actually taking photos, composition is something that's never gonna be easy. When you're first beginning photography, composition might be one of the hardest things to actually fully grasp and understand because there's so many different things that you can do with a composition to make the elements of your photo work together. And I think that having so many different options of how you can make a photo work makes having a good composition that much harder. 
With composition, it's kind of like having a multiple choice test where every answer you see could be right, but you only have to choose one. There's no exact answer to how to make your composition perfect. It's all based on your opinion and how you see things. Don't think that when you're forming your composition that you have to have the exact formula to have a great composition. You just want all the elements in your photo to work well together. And I think that even the most inexperienced photographer can see a composition that isn't good and just know why it's not good. There's certain elements in it that will stand out in an a weird way so you need to make sure that when everything in your composition works well together nothing stands out too much or the things you don't want to stand out don't stand out you probably have a pretty good composition and going forward with the actual photo is safe to do and the more and more you set up different compositions the more you're gonna understand how certain things work well together and how certain things don't work well together so when it comes to composition, getting good at having a great composition is only going to come with practice. My third tip is one that a lot of people tend to not pay much attention to for some reason because I guess they just assume their camera's going to do it, and that is locking the focus. When you're taking a photo, you know exactly what the focus of that photo needs to be. So you need to make sure that your camera is focused on that subject. Now depending on what type of photo you're getting will depend on the type of focus that you have in the overall photo. So for example, if you're taking a picture of a single person, you're more than likely gonna have all the focus on that person and everything else around it is gonna be blurry. If you're taking a picture of nature or a landscape, then you're not gonna have many blurry elements in the photo. More than likely, you're gonna have everything in the photo in focus. So when you're taking pictures like landscapes and nature photos where you have everything in focus, you're not really gonna have to worry about locking the focus anywhere. The problem comes when you want your focus to be locked in on a single subject. Camera technology nowadays is so advanced that you can easily lock your focus on a single element in an entire photo and just have that in focus. However, you're not always gonna have the element you want in focus be in focus. So this is why you need to make sure that your camera is locked in on the subject that you want it to be locked in on. Even with features like autofocus, you don't wanna just assume that the camera knows exactly what you wanna have in focus. This is why I use things like a touch focus. It's an autofocus feature where you just touch somewhere on the display screen and that is where your camera is gonna lock focus. This helps me make sure that the elements I want to be in focus are in focus the entire time I'm taking my photos. Even with smartphones nowadays, you can tap somewhere on your screen your phone is gonna find the focus there and it's gonna lock that focus and then you're safe to go ahead and take your photos. So you need to never assume that your camera is gonna be able to lock the focus where you want the focus to be. You need to make sure that your camera is always locked in where it needs to be locked in, the focus is where it needs to be and then you're probably safe to go ahead and take the photo. My fourth tip is something that I literally always, always, always use, and that is grid lines. Using grid lines is something that has been a savior for me for as long as I've been taking photos and using a camera. Almost every camera nowadays has grid lines that you can use that act as perfect guidelines to help you take a much better photo. Now typically when you're looking at your camera, these grid lines are going to appear in a 3x3 three three grid. This 3x3 three three grid is so helpful because it helps you align everything exactly how you want within your frame. So when you use these grid lines properly, it's going to actually help you when it comes to your composition. And when you have a good composition, you're more than likely going to come out with a great photo in the end. With grid lines, you can make sure certain subjects aren't too far to the right, too far to the left. They're not going to be too far up in the frame. They're not going to be too far down. You can have things perfectly centered if you want them. Grid lines are just something that you need to use. In my opinion, nobody should take a photo without having grid lines on their camera. In a previous video, I've said that you always need to have a tripod with you. Well, sometimes if you don't have a tripod, the grid lines is going to be something that can really, really save you. A tripod is most helpful because it helps stabilize your photos and helps you get a perfectly level shot. If you happen to not have a tripod, then using the grid lines can really help you 
level out those photos and make sure that everything is perfectly straight and the way that it needs to be. Trust me, I know exactly what it's like to think you have a perfectly straight photo only to look at it a little later on and realize that it's just slightly crooked, thus making everything seem just a bit off and wonky and then you just see that your photo is not nearly as good as you thought it would be. When it comes to grid lines, it's going to allow you to have everything straight and level and it's going to allow everything in your composition to be lined up exactly where you want it to be lined up. My fifth and final tip for how you can take a good photo with any camera is to simply take your time. There's going to be times where it's very easy to start rushing things, especially if you're just beginning with photography, but you need to take your time. Taking your time is going to allow you to make sure that you can have the best possible photo that you can get. Yes, it's great to be excited when you're taking photos, but you always need to make sure that you're doing the best job that you can at the time. I guarantee you're gonna always be able to tell the difference between a very rushed shot and a shot where you took your time and made sure everything was right before you took the photo. And when I say take your time, I don't mean you have to take 30 seconds between shots, but I mean you have to make sure that all the elements that you want to be in your photo or in the photo, everything is lined up correctly, you take your deep breath, you have the focus where you want the focus to be, and then you take the shot. And this is a process that could take a few seconds for some people, and other people it takes a little longer. But the more you take these photos, the quicker this process is gonna be, and at some point down the line you're gonna be taking your time, but these photos are gonna be a few seconds apart. You're gonna be snapping, snapping, snapping. It's gonna seem like you're rushing to some people, but you know deep down that you're actually taking your time and you're getting the exact photos that you want. It's just simple, when you take your time, you can have a better shot in the end. All right, quick review time, five tips on how you can take a good picture with any camera. Number one, always make sure you have good lighting. Number two, make sure the composition of your photos is always good. Number three, make sure you lock your focus where you want your focus to be in your photos. Number four, use grid lines. They're gonna make your life a ton easier, I promise. And number five, take your time. Photography is an art form that it should be fun for you no matter what, so there's no need to rush something that you're having fun with, right? When you're having fun, you're doing things you wanna do, and things just come a lot easier for you, and you're just gonna have a good time with what you're doing. If you follow these tips, I guarantee that you're gonna be able to take a good photo no matter what camera you're using. You need to be careful though because if you get too good at taking these photos you're gonna be very popular at parties because everyone's gonna want you to take a photo of them because they know and see the skills that you've developed over time. So if this is a video that you enjoyed watching hit that like button. If you have any questions or tips about what other people can do to help them take a better photo no matter what camera they're using leave a comment below. And if you're looking forward to many more Dare to Capture videos be sure to hit that subscribe button. And on that note, I'm Steven. See you in the next one. Peace.